This desolate stretch of the Arizona border is one of the deadliest for migrants. The number of people crossing in Arizona has soared. The immigration system, though, is fundamentally broken. Or has got no management right now. That's just to be real. The border plan that's currently in effect today was at, uh, implemented in 1993-94. So the plan simply is, and it's very easy to remember this way, the plan of the peace. Protect the ports of entries and protect the populated areas of the southwest border. Three designators, San Diego, El Paso, and Yuma were the three areas that were protected, which means they got all the infrastructure, all the staffing, all the technology. The other half of the plan is what failed, and it fails today. They routed all the criminal cartels into the rural parts of the southwest border, which means they sent the cartels in our backyards thinking they won't do it because it's too mountainous, too tra the train's too rough. Well, about 30 years and it's still in effect today. The cartels have used that concealment to their advantage, which has caused death and destruction. There's a gatekeeper from the cartels for flagging people across. Well, he's on the left side. We see him all the time up there. And, uh, because there's nobody up there. Once they come over this fence and they hit that side of the road, this is an international road right here. Once they hit that side, they become a local issue for us. I'm very grateful for this extraordinary turnout. Very honored that all of you came. This is my second trip to the border. I was in Yuma a couple of months ago. The opening of the border and the influx that's coming in is an existential threat to our country and to our values. And I really want to focus today on what your ideas are or how we can stop this as quickly as possible. I've been down here 52 years and the border is in worse shape than it's ever been. It, it's just a fact. 35,000 people, migrants, have been released in a little over six months. Is there a Border Patrol processing center here? Are they? No, we have. Why would they bring them here? It's spread in the, the butter, but when you spread the butter, it takes your enforcement agents off the border. Are they going to spread them out to us the communities? Gross. That's, That's right. their rationale. Yes, okay. That's about as close as the answer I can give you on that, and I apologize okay. for the confusion. I don't think it's a good rationale, but I. I don't need to understand. I don't think anybody in the world would agree with that either. The way it happens for the cartel is there's a coordinator in Tucson or Phoenix, and then a coordinator on the south side, Naco or Doug or Agua Prieta. And they're coordinating drivers to come down to our county um, to transport the undocumented individuals into Tucson, Phoenix. So a load car typically is going to have a driver, a passenger to run kind of comms, and then between four and 10 uh, migrants. How are they, these people recruited? Almost all of them are off of Snapchat, Instagram, etc. And they just set their little digital fence um, and their post will go to anybody within that fence. Low cars that come through town, we have two major thoroughfares come through uh, town doing 100, 100, 105, 115 miles an hour. The citizens of Sierra Vista are just uh, to the edge right now. A migrant was killed, eight others critically injured when they flew out of the back of his pickup. A crossing the road going on to the opposite side of traffic now. The Cochise County Sheriff's deputies rescued an undocumented immigrant inside the trunk of a burning car. A couple months ago, I woke up to find out that uh, we had a high-speed chase that came right through the front gate of my property, ran all the way down to the back end of our place and crashed into a mesquite tree. We, they were being followed by the sheriff and border patrol at the local police, but they went within 25 feet of my bedroom window at high speed, crashing down to my place. One of the high speed pursuits last year ended up right outside our Huachuca City Elementary School. Luckily, it was a Saturday. We would have had to go into lockdown. An older woman who was a member of our community, and she was hit by one of these cars going 100 miles an hour and did not survive. We've had a motorcyclist hit. We've had a bicyclist hit. Over 100 juveniles that had partaked in this, uh, ages from 12 years old up to 72 years of age, and uh, smuggler drivers, at a cost to Cochise County, $9.4 million in two years. That also equates to about how many 12-year-olds? He uh, is a driving car. Oh, yeah. We just took down a 15-year-old the other night in our neck of the woods down in the Douglas area with, with uh, Chief Fullen team and I, where he was 15 driving a stolen uh, vehicle from U-Haul. This goes on every day. As an example, 17-year-old kid from Brophy High School, which is like one of the top schools in this state, um, private uh, school. 
he's recruited off of Snapchat. Mm. And he says, look, everyone in my school knows this is how you make money. Every uh, how much do they get paid? It's used to be 700 a body. Now it's up to $1,500 per body that you successfully get to Phoenix. My name is Jackie Clay. I'm the County Superintendent of Schools. Tell me how the migrant crisis is affecting your schools. I'm talking to a student and they tell me, Miss, I make money, more money than you in one day than you make in a year. You know, I have to redirect them and say, let them know that they were born for more than this. So you have a whole generation of students now who think that this is the way to go. How do you fight that? There's a whole bunch of folks in our community that live in poverty. And I think, you know, it could be, you know, they're looking for a way up and a way out. I think right now it's, it's really, really hard to be a kid. You know, they're more at risk for, uh, you know, being recruited or, you know, getting involved with uh, uh, human trafficking or drug trafficking or that kind of thing. I think in the last three years, we probably uh, distributed about 4,000 boxes of Narcan. So we've given them to most of the school districts in the area. If you're living here and you grew up in, in, with all this around you, drugs being trafficked, humans being trafficked to the area, and how does this affect your outlook on your, your future? I think many students may not feel very safe. And uh, I, think, I think everybody's struggling right now. If I get elected president, what are the things that I can do immediately to shut this down and to solve the problem. Mr. Kennedy, and I speak very close with our Border Patrol agents on this, and the question of asking, would you want more Border Patrol agents or do you want policy and rule of law enforced? They'll tell you, more than not, policy and rule of law. If they can do their job and, and decentralize this border, uh, to come, uh, for example, you come across a border illegally, not through a port of entry, the law states you'll be immediately expelled. That's been set aside, for example. As long as you're allowed to break it and there's no consequences, they're going to keep coming. Enforce the policies, enforce the rule of law, and I guarantee you we can stop this border. But they have a legal right to turn them back at the border. They do, under Title VIII, they do. Another thing really to consider is how much of an enormous political football the border has become and how much of an impediment that is. Uh, at this very minute in Washington, D.C., we're just seeing political rancor. And I just think it's very important for independents like yourself to keep up the fight because only the voice of the independents can make any kind of wedge in this issue. I agree with that. Thank you. The other thing I'd say is very important that's not going on in this country is collective engagement, state, local, and federal working together to prioritize this border and share a common mission. Right now, that's not happening. Department of Homeland Security Advisory Council, as we sit today, has not one active law enforcement officer on it from a community. Not one America sheriff in this country has had the opportunity to sit down with President Biden not one. And until that changes, we're going to have these kind of divisions and problems and fractures. The American dream should always be the American dream, but we are selling it so cheap. Cartels get to block it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the only people truly in charge of the border in Cochise County is the Sinaloa cartel. They run it 100%. Is there a cartel scout up there right now? He's up there right now. I get him oh. all the way to the top. Yeah, go up to the yeah. on top. And uh, it was nice. I would show you, and you wave it. You, you wave at him. But um, and this is all the expansion. And what Trump was doing, what Trump did. But look down here. Where's the agents? I mean, where? Look, look all that way. See if you can find an agent. And that's where we can concern our communities. This is the fence that was built by the Obama administration. And and when the Trump administration came in, they were to continue this up the hill. Because there was no fence up the hill. And they purchased all this material to complete the fence. And then Biden, the day that President White came in, he signed an executive order at the fence not be completed. So all of this material, it goes down there for a mile. These piles of material have been just sitting there rusting out of apparently political pettiness. This is the security of your country right here. Oh, and I commend the former administration for doing something. I commend President Obama for doing it. There's a lot of good things happening on this border that was not politicized. In current time, this is one political nightmare right now that we're all going to pay the price for. And the return on this is 
going to be costly, both on human life, economic, obviously, national security. Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs>